Joining us now are two of his children, Mohammed and Rokan. Thank you very much indeed for joining us on Sky News. Bearing in mind what the Home Office has just said publicly, uh, it seems a forlorn hope that he'll be granted asylum. Uh, well, thank you for having us here. And I would like to start off by praising you know, Allah and um, saying that nothing happens except by his decree. Um, it may seem like a, a, a lost cause, but at the end of the day, I do believe that you know, there is a case um, I mean, he has resided here most of his life. He's got many children here. He's got many grandchildren here. He's got many families here. And this is not a front that we're taking only on the UK. The family also in um, Lebanon, they're also basically uh, hoping to seek out uh, other nations who are basically willing to accept him on asylum basis rather than face bogus charges and torture at the hands of the uh, Shia government in Lebanon. He is, as I understand it, however, a Lebanese citizen. He left here in 2005 of his own volition and indicated that he would not be returning. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's probably his stance, yeah. But as a family here, and I don't believe that a man who's basically locked up here yeah, has any uh, capacity over there to make any decisions. So I'm going to be making decisions on his behalf. And I believe that, you know, if uh, uh, the British are the uh, beacons of humanitarianism, then they should basically accept him back into the under humanitarian laws, yeah, that the fact that he's got children here who will be deeply affected by uh, any circumstances that happen to him while he's over there. And... Um, you know, the, uh, uh, the Shia government are basically accusing him of bogus charges, as you probably, you probably know. Did your father display that humanitarian streak? He was recorded in 2007 uh, in a recording that was released. When you meet the infidel, slice their own necks. When you make the blood spill all over and the enemy becomes so tired, now start to take them prisoners, then free them or exchange them until the war is finished. And as you know, he has said many other controversial things concerning the 9-11 bombings and the 7-7 bombings. There are many here in Britain who would not entertain his presence here again. Yes. I mean, obviously, his sayings and his uh, 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 viewpoints in, under, on, in Islam here yeah, is a completely very broad scope to actually talk about it. I'm here on the, on the humanitarian basis here. Yeah, at the end of the day, many people find what he says distasteful. And he quotes things from the Islamic perspective, uh, from the classical uh, commanders of Islam and stuff. And I think unless you know, you know the character himself, uh, like my father, I'm, you know, I, uh, I live up with him, I grew up with him. So therefore, I understand you know, the tactics that he uses to basically attract the media in order to pass the message of Islam. Right. Now, you may find that distasteful, but at the end of the day, he hasn't committed any, any uh, uh, what's it called, any um, uh, crimes in the UK.